Hey friends, welcome. I'm so glad that you are here today. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through my process for painting this vintage style watercolor rose. And I've broken it down into a few steps that I feel like make it as accessible as possible. Accessible? Accessible? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to use also a very limited color palette. So we're going to keep everything really simple. It might be a little bit of a long video, so stick with me, have some patience. It's gonna be a process. And I hope you have a cup of coffee ready or a cup of tea, but just keep it far away from your mixing water or else you might have some issues. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. All right, here we go. I start by using some basic masking tape and I tape down my paper to the table so that it stays super flat no matter how much water I'm using and it works super well. I highly recommend it. It keeps your paper from getting kind of warped and buckled. And then once I have it totally flat, smooth to the table, I will get my colors ready. So you can't even really see it, sorry. It's alizarin crimson, Windsor blue, sap green, and Windsor yellow. For brushes, I had my round brushes from Windsor & Newton. These are called the Series 7 Sable brushes. And I actually only ended up using the size 3 and the size 2. I love that they hold so much water, but you're also able to get some fine detail in there with that really nice point at the end. So getting started here, I did just an underwash of Windsor Yellow and Alizarin Crimson, a really watery, super light, um, very transparent wash. And I went ahead and I just covered the entire face of the rose with this kind of peachy pink color. My reference photo here off to the left is a gorgeous photo of a cappuccino rose that my friend Katie took. She's a florist and her company is called Gatherer Studios. I'll definitely link her down in the description. She's amazing, one of my favorite florists and I was very grateful that she let me use this photo for reference. So yes, very grateful to her. Uh, something I always wanna encourage my fellow artists in is to make sure if you can to get permission from, if you're using a reference photo, make sure you get permission from the photographer to paint it. I know they really appreciate that. So let's talk about what's happening here. So as soon as I finished this, I let it dry. And then I went in with my sap green and then I mixed it with a little bit of Windsor yellow and I'm doing a really light kind of yellow green underwash on the leaves exactly like I did on the face of the rose. And so this will be just a really even smooth, really watery layer or wash. And I find that the heavier I go with yellow, the more luminous and radiant those leaves are gonna feel when this painting is finished. Um, so I would always recommend starting a little bit heavier on the yellow. I started maybe a little bit heavier on green, but I quickly switched over to a little bit more of a yellow wash. And that definitely helped with the end result, I think. So obviously I didn't show you the process for sketching this rose out just because it took quite a bit of time, but I wanted to offer you my sketch of this rose if you need that for a reference, if that would help you in your sketch if you wanna paint along with me. So I'll provide a link down below of um, where you can get a copy of this sketch and hopefully that will help you. I would highly recommend taking your time with that sketch because especially if you're a beginner, it can really, make a huge impact on your end result, making sure that you take the time to get your sketch exactly what you want it to be, exactly where you want it to be. So here we go, let's go to the second part. Um, this is where I start to build some form and start to slowly bring out those details. And this is a process that I, I really build on pretty gradually. I work really slowly. Um, but what I do is I just get a heavier mixture of the same color I used for the underwash. So Lizard Crimson and the, what was it, Windsor Yellow. 
And so heavier mixture, a little bit less water, and then I'll go in and just lay that color where I want it to be, kind of where that shadow or crevice or, you know, petal fold is. And then I use a damp clean brush, which I'm holding in my other hand. I use that damp clean brush to go in and smooth that paint out so it kind of creates a nice gradient. I don't always work this way. I sometimes will just use one brush and I'll drop paint and then clean it off and then do my technique of the, using the damp clean brush and then get more paint, drop it on the paper, clean it off and then come back and scrub it, you know. So, you know, just one way to be a little bit more efficient, but you know, it's really easy also to get set in your ways <laughs> of, of doing things. So I would highly recommend really taking your time here. I say it a lot, but you can always go dark later, but you don't want to go too dark too quickly. You want to build that form with control and intention and just wait. <laughs> don't go too dark too quick. That is one of my number one tips. And I've ruined a lot of paintings by adding dark, dark colors too quickly. And I ruined a lot of paintings by adding color when the paper wasn't completely dry yet. So I always try to make sure that as I'm working in layers, those layers underneath are dry. And that keeps, uh, that, that allows me to create detailed paintings because you can't make a detailed watercolor if you're always painting on, on top of a wet surface. It'll just get all muddy and bleed everywhere, you know? <laughs> so we don't want that. So as I'm painting each of the little folds underneath these petals, I am very aware that a lot of this rose is wet. And so I'm really cautious about where I drop the paint. I make sure that it's only on parts of the rose that are completely dry. Cause right, as soon as you know you touch a wet section, they will just melt into each other. And I don't want that. So only painting on dry areas. Okay, that's how, that's the little, little tip there for painting detailed watercolors. As I'm wrapping up this section, one more thing I'll mention is that I noticed on the tips of some of those petals, there was kind of a purplish tone. So I mixed a very light wash of alizarin crimson and Windsor blue to kind of create that look. All right, here we go. We're moving on to building some form with our leaves. And I do find this part to be maybe the most challenging part. And the reason I find this challenging is because I'm really carefully avoiding the veins of the leaves and I'm leaving them that light yellow color and it's just kind of tricky you have to have a lot of control you have to have a pretty steady hand and it really helps to use a thinner brush but another little life hack here you don't have to keep the veins yellow you don't have to keep them lighter you can of course you can just paint it green and then you can come back later with darker green for painting your veins that way. So instead of having your veins lighter, you can have your veins darker. It's still a really great look. It still looks like a leaf and it's still beautiful. Um, you could also leave a little bit more space where you're leaving it green. My little lines are, are pretty thin, but when I was first starting this technique, I was definitely, <laughs> my, my little yellow lines were a lot thicker and just whatever you need to do to feel really comfortable. Don't feel like you need to push yourself to do the, the harder version right away. And 
what's obviously really tricky about this is what I was talking about with the rose is that when you have those really thin veins like that, as soon as you're, you know, you're on the next little section over, if your brush touches that, then you lose that crisp line. So, you know, that's kind of the, the, the danger. <laughs> so dangerous, right? Yeah, if there was ever something that was not dangerous at all, it would probably be watercolor painting. It's just like completely non-toxic and wholesome in every way, so. <laughs> no danger here. Um, okay, so going back to the rose. Uh, so here's what I'm doing. I, I just mixed some Windsor yellow, alizarin crimson, and Windsor blue. And that kind of creates almost like a dark rusty brown color. So that's what I want to start adding into those deep crevices. I want to start adding a really strong color value and so that's what's happening here I'm doing the exact same technique that I did the last time I was painting the rose but it's just a darker darker value every single time I come back so here again I'm using one paintbrush to drop color that really strong mixture and then I'm using my damp clean brush which is in my other hand to smooth out that color so that's why my hand keeps going out of frame I'm just switching brushes back and forth. This would be a time that it would be really convenient to be ambidextrous, but alas, I can only use my right hand, so. And now I'm going to add some darker color to my leaves. And the mixture here I did was sap green and Windsor blue. I wanted this to be a more cool green and I get that cooler look by adding blue to my green. And it's a very strong mixture. It's, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of water in it. It's mostly pigment. And that's how I kind of get that darker color. And obviously using a darker color, if you are avoiding the veins like I am, it gets even more, you know, <laughs> gets a little more tricky here because it becomes more obvious if your colors are bleeding into the section next to them. But, you know, even if that does happen, it's a painting, it's not a photo. Embrace it for the imperfections uh, that it has. And just know that the imperfections in paintings, I, I believe, are why people connect with it. There's a reason people want to hang, you know, artwork in their house of a rose, maybe more than they would a photo of a rose. There's something really beautiful about knowing that an imperfect hand with, you know, shakes and stutters <laughs> made that. So, all right, home stretch here, landing the plane soon. This is my favorite part of the entire process. And that is when I get to add the darkest colors to my rose. And I did this by mix, mixing the three primaries again, but in an even stronger mixture. And because my rose is pink, I always make sure that, you know, whatever is the dominant color is the color that's, you know, there's the most of that color in the mixture. So in this one, alizarin crimson is my strongest color in my mixture here. And yep, I don't have a whole lot of water. And I think because I take so long to actually bring really dark colors to my paintings, it's just so satisfying and so much fun. 
and this is the part where I feel like I really get to see my paintings um, have that dimension and start to really come to life and I just love it this is a this is the most satisfying part for me Alright, I am definitely in the home stretch here. Uh, for the final details, I'm just going to be layering on an even darker greenish, bluish value to these leaves and just dropping them in parts of the leaves where I feel like they need it. You might notice that in the top left corner, the colors are not exactly the same as my painting is. And I generally like to have a reference, if I'm going to have a reference, I like to use it for shapes and for values. So I know like, okay, this part of the flower is really dark. This part is really light. There's this little fold right here. Make sure you get that little fold. Um, but as far as colors go and hue, I really like to choose those myself as I paint. And um, so that's kind of what's happening here. I wanted my leaves to be just a little bit more on the, the cooler side than they were in the reference. And so yeah, I'm just going to finish up these last touches here and I will talk to you again at the end of the video. Okay, if you watch to this point, you are a champ. <laughs> it's a long video. So once it's totally dry, I'll go in with my eraser and remove any pencil markings I can see. I'll remove the masking tape. And there we have it, just feeling super good, super finished. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. This was so much fun to make. Um, if you did, please uh, like and subscribe and maybe share this on social media. And I will see you next time for my next video. 
If you are interested in learning more, I do have some classes available on my website at shailenelouise.com slash learn. And I hope I see you there. Bye-bye.